This tutorial is intended to describe uh, the matter of depth of field when, when imaging and, and the relationship between objects that are at different distances uh, in the same image and, and how they're brought into focus. Some are in focus and some are out of focus and thinking about uh, that question. When we uh, first discussed focus and, and uh, Im image formation, we considered the case of a simple lens and I really emphasize the lens maker's equation. And lens maker equation defines where the image focal plane is for an object at some particular distance. So if the distance is d0, the uh, image focal plane will be at d sub i, and the lens maker equation relates them. Uh, we also discussed what the best possible resolution you could have for a, a lens of some particular f number, some aperture and focal length, and that uh, can be calculated in terms of the diffraction formulas that we use, such as the airy disk, and that's represented over here. So when an object is at some particular d distance d0 and the image uh, focal plane is is just right for the lens maker's equation, then uh, we, we know what the resolution limit is. Now in actual scenes, there are lots of cases where you can have the image plane uh, be set just perfectly for some distance, but uh, and so that part will be in good focus, but other points will be off of that distance. They'll be very far away, and so they will come through as being blurred. And you can see that over here for this F2, this wide open aperture over here. You can see that the uh, monkey's in great focus, but the rest of the um, fence is not. Now if we stop down the aperture, an interesting thing, we get, may make this more and more like a pinhole, we, we stop down the aperture, you can see that the depth of field greatly increases, and we'd like to understand that phenomenon. Uh, and this term depth of field is uh, used widely in, in image making and in, and in cameras, and sometimes uh, you hear the word bokeh to refer to the, uh, this effect of a part of the image being in uh, good focus and part of it being out of focus. So in focus means that there's a good match between the distance that the point is from the optics and the position of the sensor plane, and that's what's shown here. This is a, a point that's in good focus, and the smallest this dot can get is determined by the diffraction limit of an of ideal lens. When you have points that are at different distances, so this, is the, this plane is in the right position for this depth, but it's not in the right position for nearer and fur, further depths, you will get a blurrier spot. And that's a, a geometric defocus. It's not due to diffraction. It's just because the plane is at the right, dis is the right distance behind the lens for this object distance, but not for either of these two. And you can calculate uh, this circle. This is called this blur. The size of this blur spot, which is determined really just by this geometry, can be calculated easily. And, and the formulas and uh, functions for doing that are in this uh, tutorial in ISET over here. So why does why do things change when we stop down the aperture? And that's going to be explained in this slide here. So here's the point number two that's uh, in proper focus. That's, its distance is such that the image distance is the image plane is at the right distance for good focus. So this one is at the diffraction limit. This one's too far away. And you can see as we trace rays, when right the principal ray right through the center of the lens and these rays around the edge of the lens over here, you can see how this what the circle of confusion would be pretty large for this case. And uh, if it's too if for point number three, if you chase the trace the green lines, you can see that the circle of confusion is pretty large for that line also. When you introduce an aperture, the rays at the margin of the lens, uh, you know, instead of going up all the way to the top, the only rays that can get through are rays that are closer to the center of the lens. And the lens really starts to become more like a pinhole. And because uh, you don't have quite as many angles, quite as large an angle of, lens, of rays coming through the lens, uh, the, the geometry for the circle of confusion also changes. So you have a much smaller circle of confusion uh, when you stop down the aperture, which is why the F22 image had um, much sharper focus uh, for distance than the um, F2 lens. And of course, as we stop it down really far, it's almost like you're looking through pinhole optics. So you have basically infinite depth of field and you're just diffraction limited. So the thing to note is that uh, the sharpness in the case of the circle of confusion and the geometric uh, defocus, the sharpness is improved by stopping down the aperture. But in the case of diffraction, 
the blurring is made worse. The sharpness is decreased by stopping down the aperture. Uh, for many cases, the circle of confusion is the large limiting factor. If you're, you know, you're way off the uh, in focus plane, uh, the circle of confusion will dominate. Uh, diffraction is, is a big, it can be quite a big effect when you are trying to get the best focus possible, for example, in applications like microscopy.